Assalamu alaikum and welcome back once again. This video is about the management of diabetic ketoacidosis. We'll be talking about some of the basic steps, practical tips regarding dilution and how to deliver them while practicing. I'll be leaving the timestamps of all the things that I'm going to say in this video in the description below. Now when it comes to the management of diabetic ketoacidosis, we need to have access to three IV lines. The first one is for the fluid management and that's the first step. We have to give 2 to 3 liters of normal saline over 1 to 3 hours. But we normally tend to give like 2 pints of normal saline over the first 1 hour, followed by another 2 pints of normal saline over the next 2 hours, followed by another 2 pints of normal saline over the next 3 to 4 hours. Now, you can continue the fluid or increase the rate of flow according to the fluid deficit of the patient and according to the urine output. If the serum sodium levels are increasing, we'll have to give half NS or 0.45% NSEL instead of the normal saline. One thing we should never forget is to consider the patient's cardiac status or renal function while going aggressive with the fluid management. Now coming to the second step, that's serum potassium levels. If the serum potassium levels are below 3.3 milli equivalents per liter, withhold insulin infusion until you bring it above 3.3. In textbooks, we see that we can go ahead with 40 to 80 milliequivalents per liter per hour potassium correction according to the lab value, but this can be done only when you have an access to central venous line and not with the peripheral line. If you can't get a central line, go with a slow correction of 20 to 40 milliequivalents in 500 ml of normal saline over 4 to 6 hours. Now, coming to the third step, that's insulin infusion. I want to break this into four subheadings. Firstly, calculating bolus insulin and the initial infusion rate. Secondly, infusion preparation. Thirdly, blood glucose monitoring. Fourthly, changing the insulin infusion rate. Now come to the first step, that's calculating bolus insulin and infusion rate. It's 0.1 unit per kg of body weight that has to be given as IV bolus and also as hourly infusion rate. For example, if the patient is 60 kg of weight, 60 into 0.1 is equal to 6 units, which has to be given as a bolus and also start as an infusion rate at 6 units per hour. Now coming to how to prepare the dilution. If you have a syringe infusion pump, it's so easy. You just have to dilute 1 ml of insulin, which is going to contain 40 units of insulin, dilute it with 39 ml of normal saline. And when you do this, you'll have a dilution of 1 unit of insulin per 1 ml. And this makes it easy for you to set the rate. Because if your desired rate of infusion is 6 units per hour, you just have to set it at 6 ml per hour. Now, if you don't have an infusion pump, you can add 50 units of insulin in 500 ml of NS to have a dilution of 1 unit of insulin per 10 ml of NS. So in that case, to get a desired infusion rate of 6 units per hour, you have to multiply 6 into 10, that's 60 ml per hour. Now, if you're using a macro drip set, it can be a little bit difficult to set and maintain the required macro drops per minute and also to titrate it. So to make it easy, you can use flow regulator or dosy flow. All you have to do is just dial in the required rate of infusion and it does the job. Flow regulator allows you to set a flow of any value from 5 ml to 300 ml per hour. In case if you don't have a flow regulator or dosy flow, use micro drip set. In that case, when you want to convert the rate of infusion of 60 ml per hour into the number of micro drops per minute, what we normally do is divide it by 60 to make it per minute. Also multiply by 60 to convert into micro drops because 1 ml is 60 micro drops. So what happens over here is both the 60s get cancelled each other and you are left with the same value of our infusion rate, which is basically the amount of micro drops required per minute. So for 60 ml per hour, 60 micro drops per minute. And if it's 40 ml per hour, it's 40 micro drops per minute. As simple as that. This will change if you're using macro drip set because one ml is 20 macro drops. And in that case, you'll have to multiply with 20 instead of 60 and just do the math. But it's much easier if you stick with the micro drip set. Now coming to the blood glucose monitoring. It should be monitored on hourly basis. Our goal of reduction should be in between 50 to 75 mg per deciliter per hour and no aggressive reduction of blood glucose. Once the patient gets stable, we can space the monitoring to second hourly or even fourth hourly according to the patient's status. 
If the blood glucose level falls below 250 mg per deciliter, add 5% dextrose to IV fluids because our goal in DK is to maintain a blood glucose level in between 150 to 200 mg per deciliter until the anion cap is closed. Now coming to the titration of insulin. You'll have to reduce the insulin infusion rate by 50% if the blood glucose level falls by more than 100 mg per deciliter per hour. Or increase the infusion rate by 50% if the change in blood glucose level is less than 50 mg per deciliter per hour. In DKA, when blood glucose level falls below 250 mg per deciliter, you may reduce the infusion by 50% to maintain it at the target level we mentioned before. That's 150 to 200 mg per deciliter. So that's it for now. I hope this was helpful for you in understanding the basics of management of diabetic ketoacidosis. If you have any doubts or queries, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and take care.